Hey friends, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to discuss whether or not intermittent fasting, also known as time-restricted feeding in this particular study, whether or not that will hinder or help your exercise performance. It's Mike Monson with High Intensity Health. Thanks so much for showing up and tuning in. If at any point you enjoy this content, please hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, you got to do so because we launch videos like this every single week and interviews with experts in the field. So let's dive into the study. And again, if you're lifting weights and you're trying to intermittent fast for health benefits and longevity, you might want to take notes here. So what we're gonna do is talk about the results of this eight week clinical study that was really designed by, uh, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Tinsley over at Texas Tech University and scientists over at Waco as well, Waco, Texas. They had a control group, which was just a normal diet and uh, then they had the uh, TRF group, so Time Restricted Feeding Group. And let me just pause right here. So under the umbrella of intermittent fasting, there's different subsets of intermittent fasting. There's alternate day fasting, there's the 5-2 diet, which is basically you know, um, two non-consecutive days out of the week, you're fasting. There's the so-called fasting mimicry diet that Walter Longo has been really talking about and so forth. And then there's time restricted feeding. Kind of the only difference I would say uh, between intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding is that time-restricted feeding is, you know, the feeding and fasting windows are confined by an element of time of the day. And this is, a, you know, admittedly I'm biased and pro time-restricted feeding because our body has a circadian clock system built into it, woven into it. And I think that eating, I don't think I know based upon research, eating in trains and inputs your body is an input into your circadian clock system just like light is. So we need to be consistent with our meal timing. Now, this particular study had uh, the individuals, uh, their feeding windows between 4 p.m. and uh, p.m. and then midnight, okay? On non-training days. Okay, so check it out. So the they train just three days a week. So just three days a week. RT for resistant training, both groups did that, okay? And what they had individuals do is fail at between eight and 12 reps, doing major lifts, squats, deadlifts, presses, bench press, stuff like that, right? Um, they worked with a certified strength and conditioning specialist, a CSCS, which by the way, that's who I personally work with, Dan Stephenson. Shout out to Dan, I'll put a link here. We have some courses with Dan about how to squat properly, how to deadlift properly, and so forth. But if you're gonna work with a trainer, that's uh, one certification I do recommend. And then on non-training days, so this was uh, four days a week, these individuals were only eating between this time block, okay? So that's, they're getting all their calories in, just basically stuffing them into the evening. Now, at the end of the study, they, they looked at one rep max on a few different lifts, and what they found is that there wasn't you know, major changes between the two different groups. But here's what is interesting. This group gained 2.2 kilograms or so, it was roughly, I wanna say around two kilograms. And this group, I think they barely gained any weight and they might've even lost weight. I wanna say it's around, I could be off here guys. Um, it, it was right around 0.5 kilograms uh, delta and I think they actually lost weight. So, you know, this group did experience a little bit more hypertrophy. So they looked at the circumference of the bicep muscle and I, I believe they looked at the leg as well. And so, this is where you need to understand context and your goals, okay? So is hypertrophy and building muscle and building size and strength your primary goal? If that's your primary goal, then maybe you wanna open up your feeding window so you can get more food in throughout the day or not fast so much. But if you're trying to just maintain the size and strength that you have and optimize potentially longevity, then perhaps time-restricted feeding and just a compressed six-hour window or something along those eight-hour window uh, is gonna be okay with you. So it just, it really depends upon what your goals are. And you know, they basically concluded in the study that time-restricted feeding, which is a subset of intermittent fasting, is you know, achievable for athletes, okay? Uh, out of the 28 subjects that started, 18 finished, so there was a, quite a few college kids that did drop out, but it's definitely doable. Strength increased, you know, they, they, and their body weight didn't change that much, but this group had unrestricted feeding, so they were eating whenever they want, however they want. There was no fasting protocol built in whatsoever. Again, to summarize, can you intermittent fast in TRF if you're an athlete? Yes. Is that going to optimize your muscle hypertrophy? That's the thing that you need to personally figure out. 
And if hypertrophy and if exercise performance is your primary goal at this point in your life right now, then maybe you might want to have a normal unrestricted diet. I'm not saying that's what's the best for longevity, but again, this group did gain more size and we don't know how much body fat uh, and stuff, you know, and differences and all that sort of thing. But it's definitely doable. What I found for most people, this is me personally, is training first thing in the morning fasted, having a meal within a few hours after that, and trying to eat dinner earlier in the day, like 2 p.m. or 4 p.m. And then you're really getting your fasting in there, but you're getting the nutrition after the workout. My wife does something different. She does an, you know, a type of intermittent fasting called time-restricted feeding. She only has one meal a day around 4 p.m. So we try to have dinner be done by 6 p.m. She resistance trains around 2 p.m., around 12 to 2. So she finds that to be very effective. So again, it really depends on your goals. This is just one of many studies that we're going to be reviewing. It, it, you know, I'm sure if you looked at long-term health parameters here with this unrestricted feeding diet versus these guys, there would be changes. Actually, I know there would be changes because there is an additional study that I'll link right here that recently showed that in early time-restricted feeding, upregulated autophagy, affected mTOR, affected a lot of parameters that are linked with long-term health outcomes that are more favorable. So again, it comes down to goals. You can TRF, you can intermittent fast and get gains but they may not be as good as the gains that you would get from an unrestricted diet. So I don't know what your goals are, I don't know what your health history is, your family history, your genetic susceptibilities towards different diseases, but again, it's weighing the pros and cons and the consequences. Do you want gains? Do you wanna win a powerlifting competition or a bodybuilding competition? Then perhaps then a really tight compressed feeding window maybe is not for you, but if you're trying to get the best of both worlds, that's where TRF and intermittent fasting comes in. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you work out and you embark on intermittent fasting and or time-restricted feeding, I would love to hear from you. Type in the comment bar below and let me know what works for you. What I personally do, as I mentioned, is I try to eat you know, around between 10 and four, that's my window. On days that I'm not training, I'll usually do OMAD. And so, am I as strong as I would be on an unrestricted diet? Absolutely not, I'm a little bit weaker but my mental clarity, my overall energy, my health parameters, my body fat is lower, and so that's just what I, what I do. So anyway, friends, um, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for tuning in all the way, and links to the studies that we mentioned are linked below. Catch you on the next one.